Welcome back to The Seven Show. Another massive episode in store for you guys today where we got a brand new segment. Bit on that very shortly, but first let me introduce my panelists of The Seven Show. To the right of me, we have got the one, the only, the undefeated Liverpool man, Chris! How you going everybody? Welcome back to The Seven Show. Good to, good to see a few of you follow me on Twitter now. Yeah, follow Chris as you can see, his uh, Twitter handle right there. Anyways, to the left of me, another undefeated champion as well, Edgar! Say hello to the people! How's it going guys? Coming off the high this morning with the Champions League and uh, pumped for the show guys. Yes, United defeating yes, uh, Club Bruges 3-1. Uh, but yes, lads, we have a new segment for you guys today uh, up in the 7 show. We have called it Hit and Miss. It's where we give our uh, bold statements for the week of the best performance. Could be player, could be manager, could be anything to do with a football club. Uh, the best performance uh, of that week and the worst as well, obviously, the miss. So Hit and Miss. But first, lads, let's get into the review of the Premier League this week. Now, first game... Of the weekend, lads, was United again. This time, a 1-0 win against Aston Villa. Edgar, give me your thoughts on the uh, game. Yeah, well, look, uh, to start off, it was a Friday night, um, or a Saturday morning for us, the first in my lifetime anyway. Um, very similar to the last game, man. I mean, it wasn't exactly eye-catching. Big uh, news on Adnan Yanezai coming in for Ashley Young. Started behind Rooney. And, um, you know, the beautiful thing was, we kept Villa to nothing. Like... Absolutely nothing, but in saying that, we hardly created anything, and it was just a beautiful ball from Mata, a sick turn from Yanazar, they got us the goal. And a bit of luck, really. Basically, yeah, I thought the performance was okay, very, yeah. still it's not, scrappy. Uh, still, yeah, scrappy is a perfect word, still definitely not brilliant, but not worse either, because for me, Aston Villa, they had one shot on goal the whole game, but in saying that, we had next to mm. nothing as well. Thoughts on the game, Chris? Well, I thought it was, um, I thought it was a... A boring game overall to watch. Um, I don't think Aston Villa have, have very much at all after watching that game. Um, but you know how to get the three points. That's what's important. And at the end of the season, if they have 75, 80 points, it's not going to matter how they played in the first two games of the season. So. Yeah. Exactly. And for me in that game, for me, uh, out, two outstanding, three outstanding players for me was Damien, Smalling. But for me, sure. the biggest one... Uh, biggest one for me was Bastian Swansteiger. Yeah. When he came on, he absolutely bossed it. So good to see him uh, in the United uh, lineup uh, in that game. Anyways, let's move on to another really good uh, performance. Uh, Everton defeating Southampton uh, at Southampton. That was an unbelievable game. If you watched yeah. it, thoughts on the game, Chris? I thought it was. Um, I thought. It Southampton were a little bit unlucky in the fact that they actually played pretty well. They, they dominated, yeah, didn't they, they? Especially the first 45 yeah, minutes. Uh, Pele, Pele had a few chances oh, to yeah. score. That's like, very couple minutes. And also, they, they, can, they seem to cop a very similar goal in that of what Newcastle scored the week before, where they were caught exactly from a corner they on were. the counter-attack. And it was just a great ball from Kone to Lukaku, who looked, who looked like a beast. Uh, Romelu Lukaku was just on fire in that game. Was. Uh, thoughts on the game, Edgar? Yeah, man. It just... A cheeky goal from the counter attack, and then after that, man, Everton take their chances. They did. Barkley was sensational. Yeah, for me, Luke, Ross Barkley, man of the match. Lukaku doing like, everything right, man. Um, he almost got a penalty as well at the start. He went on that crazy run down the left wing. Yeah, unreal. But, um, yeah, no, great performance. Tottenham to Stoke to in a result that absolutely shocked me. I thought literally yeah. Tottenham were going to win three 0 and to be fair, Tottenham were two 0 up. Thoughts on that, Chris? Uh. Yeah, Tottenham at 2-0 at half time. I thought, yeah, they, they should really go go to win this game. And it's like they fell asleep. It's like 77th minute was their first, they considered their first goal, which was a bit of a iffy penalty. I'm not too sure if yeah, it was. Those a hands on him, man, those hands. <laughs> no, I'll have a little bit of that on my miss later on <laughs> in the segment. Um, yeah, but as I said, Stoke, Stoke like, they done well, so... Good to get the uh, point. Yeah, it was. I thought, I thought really at halftime, I thought Tottenham should have gone on. I thought, to be honest, I thought the game was in the bag at halftime, personally. But anyways, getting on to the next game, Sunderland 1 and Norwich 3. Another result, personally, I did not see coming. Yeah. Thoughts of the game, Mega? Oh, man. Sunderland look like they're in big trouble, man. Don't have much going for them right now. And, um, yeah, man, I can't see too many positives out Dick of that. Dick Advocate has definitely got uh, a bit of work on his hands to yes, do. Yes, sir. Anyways, getting to the next game and another team in form, Swansea winning 2-0 against Newcastle. 
Uh, for me, they absolutely boss this game. They look a real football team. They look like they can do some damage yeah. this year. For me, they're going to be last season Southampton. Uh, that's what I reckon Swansea Ooh, will could, be. Could. That's my opinion. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I called it a couple of weeks ago that Swansea could finish higher than Tottenham. And at the moment, you did, didn't you? you at did. the moment, you, you wouldn't want to be like, you, you can see the difference in the two styles at the moment. Yeah. Uh, on to the next game. Boring nil-nil draw. Watford against West Brom. Uh, do you guys have anything to say yeah, about that? The, the only thing I've got to say about the game was that chance that Berahino, Berahino missed, yeah. oh, which was a six-yard box header. And if you're going to be a 15 million pound striker moving to Tottenham, got to nail that, mate. You've got to score Must that nail that. Goals. Yeah, definitely. Uh, West Ham won and Leicester two. That's another a, team that's a shock. who's on fire. Yeah, who's on fire, and just another shock result. Yeah, look after, after West Ham, you know, take care of Arsenal. You're expecting West Ham to be strong, you know, at home, but they just. Collapse, mate. They did. Well, Leicester and, uh, provided the goods. Yeah, Leicester, mate. Um, Claudio Ranieri, he looks to be doing the business for them. Uh, getting on to the next game, we have got uh, Crystal Palace losing to Arsenal 2-1. Put up a good fight, but unfortunately couldn't get the biscuits. Chris? Yeah, I watched the, I watched the whole game. Actually. Yeah. I enjoyed the game. It was a real good game, end-to-end -end stuff. Um, Arsenal, you can see their flaws, but you can also see their the class. Qualities, like, Mesut Ozil looked like he was back to... Kind of where it, where it should be, and he played a really good game. Yeah. Um, that goal taken by Giroud was unbelievable. That, similar, that was similar a cracker. That, that was a cracker. Yeah, similar to that of what Mata scored last year, like a scissor that was behind him. Great goal. Um, I him? think Czech was a. I can't forget that goal. Um, it was the same. I can't remember. But yeah, it was a good game. Anyway. Yeah, good win. Now, yeah. yeah. Um, just on top of that, I felt like Sanchez just gave so much more X factor oh, like, on the ball. Yeah, he's beat a man, yeah, puts Sanchez. the crosses in. Must yeah. Sanchez was awesome. And you know, Ward just shooting himself in the foot that yeah. second goal, man. Now, getting on to the biggest game of the week. Yeah, yeah. Manchester City 3, Chelsea 0. Wow. That was a dominant performance if I've ever seen Did one from not City. See that coming, they man. put Chelsea... To the sword. Absolutely. Opinions, Chris, in the game? Oh, just, just sheer class from Aguero. And Co, yeah, yeah, yeah Turo. Right Maguire. from the get go, right from like 20 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah. yeah, 20. Well, and I must say, that first through ball from Silver. David Silva is one of the best through balls I've ever seen. Stuff of dreams, man. Oh, the touch of a swan. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, got opinions on the game? Oh, yeah, man. Look, uh, don't want to get too uh, rude, but Chelsea were absolutely bent over, mate. Like, yeah. they weren't even slightly in this game. They had yeah. one clear chance and they fluffed that. So, yeah, and that mate, hats off City. Brilliant. Might, that might be in my uh, it's hit, not, hit and miss segment. It's not what the doctor ordered. <laughs> 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 Anyways, getting on to the game Chris has been waiting for. Liverpool undefeated, six points, two clean sheets, 1-0 win over Bournemouth. Take it away, Chris. I think, if you remember correctly, last week I said it was going to be a real tough game for Liverpool, and it was. Bournemouth with a better team. You did On, on the night, Bournemouth with a better team. We were just lucky that Christian Benteke was a cut above everyone else in our team. Um, the only thing that went, went really bad for us was that Henderson looked to pick up an injury, and he came off mm. after 51 minutes. Doesn't look good because he's having a scan done on his that foot. So, ankle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, who knows how long he'll be out for. But we, we looked pretty poor, actually, and we were, we were lucky to get the points. Yeah, I, I just felt like if Coutinho wasn't on the ball, what's happening, man? Because Lalana looked out of it again. Um, do you think any players will be dropped? Because you've got a big game coming up against Arsenal. We'll get to that later on. Mm. But do you think anyone will be dropped from Liverpool in the starting eleven? Honestly, I think Jordan Ivey will be dropped from the game. He yeah. wasn't our worst player, but I can, see, I can see him changing shape a little bit and, and, and putting Alberto Moreno in as a left winger because he came on in this game and showed that he is really fighting for his spot. He was brilliant when he came on at, at left midfield. Yeah. And he gives you a little bit more defensive uh, defensive work as well. So yeah. I think he might come in. I'd be my drop, get, drop out. I think everyone else will stay the same, apart from, obviously, um, Henderson. Yeah. He'll have to be dropped. Uh, he'll have to stay out injured, probably for Emre Chan. No, Origi? Yeah. Nah, no, no. Nah. No, Firmino won't start? You know I don't think Firmino will start. I think it'll still be Lallana, because he seems to be Rogers' like, uh, favourite boy at the moment. Yeah. I don't think Lallana should be starting personally, but... No. Nah. The only thing that I will, if there's not much, there's much, not much really to be criticised, but if I was, it's like, you're playing Bournemouth at home, you reckon Rodgers could have gone with two strikers up front, been a little bit more attacking? I don't, I don't think he 
you can't you can't really say that because Benteke was was unbelievable by himself. Like it didn't, he didn't was, look he like was. Alone, it man. didn't look like he needed any help. It was yeah. more the midfield that needed just someone to just just Provide create them. a little bit. Yeah, and at yeah. the start at the start of the game, Liverpool looked like they were scared to kind of send Benteke through and pass the ball to him. And then I think they realised that this guy actually can play with the ball at his feet. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, true. So. All right, lads, that's it for the review, and let's now get to the new segment: hit and miss. Now there is Rooney. Oh my. How empty a net do you need it to be? So here we are for the new segment, Hit and Miss. Like I said before, it's where we give our bold statement of which player or which manager, which club, anything that did really well in the previous week and uh, who was absolutely terrible as well. So who wants to go first with their hit of the week? I'll go first with the hit. My, my hit for this week was Norwich Football Club. Because uh, they've had their first win in in over two in two years back in the Premier League away as well. Mm. I think they were unlucky last week against Crystal Palace when Cameron Jerome was disallowed that goal. Yeah. So I think they kind of deserved this yeah. result, and it's a great result, three one away. So big ups to Norwich. Yeah, and Nathan Redman looks to be a real player. Yeah. He yeah. looks yeah. to be. Nathan Redman. Yeah. Shouldn't have listened to you, Curtis. I dropped it for my fantasy team. <laughs> and he scored two goals in two weeks. <laughs> Oh no, oh no. Alright, Edgar, get to your hit of the week. Uh, my hit, guys, will be Andre Ayew in that front three of Swansea. I mean, I didn't think Andre Ayew would have that big of an influence coming from Marseille. Um, I thought he'd come over and do a job, but him, Montero, and Gomez, they just. They've hit it off, man. and They look unbelievable. All oh, three man. of them. That front line, exactly what you said. Gomez looks like a real player. That Jefferson Montero, he hey, is tearing it up. Yeah. Step over and he's, everything. He's and such a player. On top of that, I never thought I'd say this, but John Joe Shelby looks brilliant, man. On the ball, he is dishing it left, yeah. right. Chris will right. know. I've always rated yeah, John so, Joe yeah. Shelby. So do I. He's, um, he's a real. I've good always, player. even at Liverpool and the United fan, I'm, I don't like Liverpool players. I've always rated John Joe Shelby, and scored probably a, even so more that he's left Liverpool. He's got a, he's got a stunner on us as well. Yeah, he'll be back at Liverpool. You reckon? You never know. It wouldn't surprise me if Liverpool put a thirty million pound bid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I can't see Liverpool. He loves Liverpool. And I can't see Liverpool fans that they, they wouldn't want him back. So you could be onto something there. All right, my hit of the week is the Belgium Brigade. The Belgians this week have been on fire this week in the Premier League. Uh, let me just read it. I've got some stats for you here. Oh. Adnan Yanaze. Look, these are all the goal scorers this week. Adnan Yanaze starting, scoring a goal. Lukaku, two goals. Uh, Nasser Chadley, a goal for Tottenham. Vincent Kompany, two goals in two goal, weeks yeah. for him. Christian Benteke off the mark, another Belgium. Maran Fellaini scoring today in the yes, Champions sir. League, another Belgium, and uh, a clean sheet for uh, uh, Mignolet from Liverpool. All the Belgians seem to be on fire this week. So, uh, big it up to the Belgians. Now to the biggest miss of the week. Now my miss of the week. I'll go first with that one. Go for it, mate. My miss of the week, it's a bit controversial, but it's the player of last season, player of the year, Eden Hazard. PFA. I know it's like, how can I say this? He's, uh, well, now we're only two games in. Premature, maybe. But you wouldn't even know that he's played two games. He has been god awful. Ghost. I can understand if you're in poor form, but you, he is getting nowhere near the football, creating no chances. He had one chance in that game against Manchester City. I think that's pretty much the only time he touched the ball, and he absolutely screwed it sideways. He needs to create. He needs to grab games by the scruff of the neck. I know Jose Mourinho the other week compared him to Cristiano Ronaldo. Or actually, he said he's better than Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> There's no chance in the world you'll see Eden Hazard grab the game by the neck and say, right, lads, follow me. We're going to win this game. It just does not happen with Eden Hazard. I think, controversial call, he's a little bit overrated in my Ooh, opinion. Yes, like All right, <laughs> Edgar, got onto your miss of All the right. week. Yeah, look, I'm going to enjoy this, mate. Um... I personally, I'm not a big Jose Mourinho fan. He just talks too much crap, but the dude does his job. He, is, he is, Jose Mourinho mate. is a massive miss of the week. Mate. It's an obvious call, but well right. done, guess. So he start there with the medical staff. I mean, you know, he decides to sit them both off the bench. I mean, these guys are doing their job, man. They're coming on and doing what they need to do, taking care of the player. Bang, on the day, what's, what is it? Uh, K, who gets punched in the nose, yep. actually needs medical attention. <laughs> Next, half time, he swaps Terry and Zuma. Says that Zuma is his quickest player in the team. 
uh, you know, in order to handle Aguero, surely the, the man knows that Aguero's yeah. going to start that game. And Terry, of all people, you know, your captain. Yep. You know, First time he's ever substituted yeah. John Terry, ever. I mean, that, that's going to hurt, dude. And then on top of that, they get smacked 3-0. And at the end of the game, has the nerve to say, it was a fake scoreline, 3-0 doesn't, res- you know, uh, reflect, reflect the game. The game. Yeah, he was totally get, out of order. Get off it, mate. Get with off that it. fake result, that get was that was the fairest. Result. If anything, was a bit unfair towards City. Could have been, that seriously, uh, Aguero could have had a hat trick in, in twenty yeah, minutes. Absolutely, they could have won five nil in this game. Yeah, it was a fake scoreline, man. It could have been five or six. You go, Chris. My well, my miss goes to the officials, and that includes um, the referees and the linesmen, because so uh, all the officials, yeah, all the officials, the week. Uh, maybe maybe not all of them, because I didn't watch every game, but the games I seen, I thought they bottled. Uh, the Cochrane decision against Crystal Palace. They did he, too. He, yeah. he def- you don't give someone a yellow card and for an even worse tackle, give him a warning and then let him get away with it. And it could have well, it could have really cost Crystal Palace some points. Yeah. Uh, also, the the referee in the Newcastle game, I think Mitrovic against uh, was it Swansea Southampton. Sw- against Swansea. Oh, sorry, Mitrovic, yeah, yeah, yeah. he should have been sent off because it was a, over the ball. T- that's two weeks in, in a minute. Yeah, it was a nasty two, challenge. Yeah. Two yeah. shocking challenges. And I know I'm a Liverpool fan, but if like. They're going to bring in new rules about about offsides and stuff like that. You got to they got to try to uh, adhere to these rules because yeah. they, we've scored a goal that that shouldn't have counted and 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 they have scored a goal which should have counted. So it really should have been one 0 to Bournemouth. That can cost that club a lot of money at the end of the season. Especially when they if they get relegated. relegated. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So, I, I, I come honest, on, Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that they. Under their interpretations last season, that probably would have st- stood that yep. goal yeah. that uh, Benteke scored. But now that they've come out with these new rules and you know this this well, new interpretation, it, I honestly thought that was offside. I think everyone else did, like you said. So uh, why, why, why do they fix things that aren't broken? Really, like last season was, true. was it that badly? Was yeah. it that bad that rule? But anyway, yeah. So that's it for the segment hit and miss. Now let's get on to your Twitter questions. Right, so the questions we have here today from you guys. The first one comes from Lewis. Now, Lewis says, What are your thoughts on Chelsea and Jose Mourinho and where will they finish in the league? Start with you, Edgar. Uh, well, thanks for your question, first of all, Lewis. Um, well, to begin with, man, I'm not going to just change my decision uh, off two games. I mean, it's still very early, but I'm, I'm still going to stay first, man. I'm going to stick to my guns for now. But come um, to, towards the end of uh, August, when we have to give our, you know, our final table, it could be different, man. Chelsea could be on one. And that's, we give our predictions after tr- uh, transfer deadline day, so yeah. keep that in mind as well. Yeah, so, um, you know, Chelsea could very well be on one point, two points, and, you know, it, it starts looking a bit shaky. But um, for now, Lewis, I'm sticking to uh, Chelsea first. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Edgar there. I know City are absolutely on fire at the minute, but I do know Jose Mourinho very, very well. He's a stubborn manager. And he knows how to get a result. And I'm still back in Chelsea at the minute uh, for top spot. But that could change over the next weeks uh, if they don't sign anybody. Chris? I'm going to have to dis- disagree with the boys here. I thought a couple of weeks ago Man City were my favourite to, to win the Premier League. And I still I still think that Man City will probably win the Premier League. That's my opinion. I'm going to stick with uh, Chelsea to finish second. Uh, I'm not going to jump that far off their, their bandwagon that they're going to drop out of the top two. Because I think those two sides consistency wise are better than anyone else mm. it's only early days and, and other teams really aren't, aren't firing yet and it was a big fixture so yeah it's, and it's early days it's too. early days two, there's still 36 games to go yeah, isn't there yeah, uh, alright so next question comes from Tal Luxe and he says out of the three newly promoted teams who uh, have you been most impressed with starting with you Chris well I'll go back to my hit if you remember what that was It was it's, it's Norwich I'll <laughs> Norwich have been, um, in my eyes, the best team that's promoted because, they, like I said, they were unlucky against Crystal Palace to not get at least a point, and they were fantastic against Sunderland. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Chris there. I've written down Norwich as well, uh, especially impressed with their new manager and the result they got on the weekend. Like I said, I'm a massive fan of Nathan Redmond, and to see him develop in the Premier League the way I thought he was going to last time, so happy for the lad, so happy for Norwich. So, I want to go with Norwich. Edgar? Uh if you remember to the first episode, guys, I went crazy with the highlighter and just selected all the new players that <laughs> Watford had signed. I remember that. I need a new highlighter. I read that in. <laughs> and um, look, the fact that um, they've got a new coach who's never even you know set foot in Watford. They've got about seven, eight new players that they've gelled together. They took it to Everton on the first day of the season, 2-2, and they're going to draw at home. It's not a bad start, and I'm, 
surprise, man, Watch to be it. honest. Good call, good call. All right, next question. Your thoughts on Otamendi going to Manchester City. Ega, take it away. As a United fan, he's been yeah. linked with United all uh, summer long. And now, out of nowhere, out of left field, he's pretty much done and dusted uh, on to City. Your opinions? Oh, look, it's... You know, in hindsight, looking at it, that he's going to City over us, it does hurt a bit, and it, and it could come back to bite us. I mean, he could be absolutely terrific, but um, I, I'm not overly, I'm not scared. Like, you know, I'm 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 not shaking not my boots here. No, not really, man. To be uh, honest, my opinions. Uh, th- this is for me. This is a massive loss. Yeah? Massive Ooh. loss. United need a, a, an experienced defender, and that's exactly what Otamendi gives. Not only are we not getting Otamendi, he's going to our neighbours, and yeah. he's making a very good defence, probably the best defence in the world now. Like, you got Zabaleta, you know, and you got uh, Sangna uh, back up for them. Mangala's not going in the opposite direction mm-hmm. now. He's staying, so you got Mangala, you got Otamendi, you got Vincent Company, Joe Hart and goal, and you got the uh, left back there. Who is it? Um... Kolarov, Kolarov, he is unbelievable. What a game he had against Chelsea. And you got Klesi as backup. You don't get much better defences than that. So, yeah. for me, United, massive, massive stuff up there. And I think we're going to regret that later on. Uh, the reason why I say it, guys, as well, is because, for me, my ideal two centre-back pairings is Rojo and Smalling. And for me, Rojo gives you that natural left foot. Yeah, that's true. Now, let me just... Ask you something, yeah? Yep, go for it, mate. Smalling and Rojo versus Company and Otamendi. Yeah. That is... That is we're not even in the same it, league. It's there to be built, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but on top of that, I'm not willing to drop Smalling for Otamendi. Like, I'd be happily to see Smalling just grow, mate. He'd yeah. be like our next first... So I might, so might, to be fair. And I think he is, like you say, that young up-and-coming, give him time to grow. But I think uh, that player next to Smalling needs to be experienced, Yeah. in my opinion. Sorry, Chris. Go for it, mate. Having a discussion. Yeah, I, I haven't seen much of Otamendi as a player. I heard big raps on him, obviously, and it's no good to see a a like another a stronger team get even stronger. But I think Manchester City, regardless of this season, is is well ahead of where United and Liverpool finish up. So it really doesn't bother me because I think Liverpool and United will be fighting for that fourth spot. So. It, they're going to be up at the top, so it doesn't really bother me. And your thoughts on, on United missing out after Mindy? I, you I, think, that's not... I think they could use kind of United as a bit of a smokescreen to kind of get Man City to bid maybe even more, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that there's a lot of shifty business when it comes to that sort of stuff. Mm. And and um, teams like that know that Man City got the money. So all you got to do is put, oh yeah, he's going to go to Man United. It's and, happened a lot this season. And then Man City will put mm. in like £45 True. million. Pounds, so. like, uh, like, uh, Valencia know how to make money from from selling players. They yeah. always have. Yeah. and PSG had a similar yeah. thing. And Valencia actually bought the image rights to Cristiano Ronaldo as well yeah. this summer as well. So that's a bit interesting for you guys if you want to know that. Anyways, next question here from Alex. And he says... If you can sign any player for your club, who and why? Hashtag 7 show. By the way, make sure you guys use the hashtag. Um, so I've kind of split this up into two questions. A realistic player and an uh, unrealistic player. So a realistic and unrealistic player. Two players. Who would you want to sign from your club? Chris, who would you go for, mate? Well, unrealistically, I will say... I would love Liverpool to sign Yaya Toure. I've always just loved watching that, that guy play. And Liverpool, to me, lacks central midfield. And um, I think that he's just one of the best, at his best, in the world in that position. Um, and realistically, I've kind of gone for a, a poor man, Zaya Toure, and I've gone with Musa Sissoko of Newcastle, because another beast, really good player, can play really well in central midfield if given the chance, and I think he could add something to our squad. Yeah, and that's a realistic signing as well. Uh, with me, I have gone uh, unrealistic. I have gone with Cristiano Ronaldo. Pretty obvious there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, realistic, I've gone with Thomas Muller. We have been linked with him now all last summer. And now all this summer. This move could happen. Big, big bucks. But I reckon if United are serious and they want to be where they say they want to be, Champions League finals and Premier League titles, we need to sign Thomas Muller. Yeah, apparently we've chucked an absolute boatload at him. £75 million, pounds, apparently. <laughs> Um, so I would love us to get Thomas Muller. All right, Edgar, who would you sign? Yeah, so um, unrealistically, I'm going Ramos. Now I know I said I wouldn't take Adam Mendy, but that's because uh, Ramos for me is just complete, mate. He's that was almost realistic. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, but you know, obviously he signed a new deal now, so that's completely off the table. But I mean, the man's won it all. That 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 got moved from the realistic yeah. to the unrealistic section. Bang, real quick. I, I, I think it was never realistic. I think it was always about yeah, yeah. Sergio. No, I, no I, I actually I don't believe that. I actually believe there was uh, a chance because he had a massive fight with Perez and they weren't on talking terms. And he actually said to his agent. Uh, go get me a good deal. How, I actually do believe there was actually something in there. And how come he's been made a captain then by the president? Like, well, they've had the this, they've, they've fixed say. things up and there's, they've had a discussion. Yeah. End of the day, man. I think if you said to him right now, tell me you want to stay in Madrid or you want to go to United, he stays in Madrid. Yeah, yeah exactly. 100%. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Yeah, so I mean, the, the man's done it all and him next to Smalling or him next to Rojo for me, that completes my life, man. <laughs> um, so you're a realistic signing now? I'm going to jump on uh, Stones and um, Evans in a swap deal. Um, I love seeing English talent. <laughs> Mate, this is just a swap deal? <laughs> no, no, but... Get that done every day of the week. Chucking a free iPhone no, no. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, uh, sending a few iPads their way. But, um, yeah, look, man, I'd, I'd love to see Stones in there. Chucking Phil Jones as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually done with Jones, man. I've um, jumped off that bandwagon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit... Yeah. But, um, yeah, to see, you know, Rojo, Stones, uh, Smalley, and, you know, just all duke it out for that spot, that'd be yeah. brilliant, man. It's yeah. Def- definitely uh, telling. Yeah, so that's it for the Twitter questions this week. So make sure you guys, if you want to get your uh, question answered next week, uh, tweet me. Uh, I'll give you, check the link in the description at, uh, sorry, at Curtis7 is my Twitter handle. Make sure you use the hashtag 7 show. So, uh, yeah, anyways, lads, let's get into the review for this weekend. Alright, lads, let's get stuck into the preview for this week. Not only are we doing the previews for the team, we are actually also got a new little segment down the bottom here. The bold prediction for the week as well. Something exciting to look forward to. But first, let's get into the matches this week. First, Edgar. United at home again for the third time. Uh, first game in the Premier League. We are at home at Old Trafford to Newcastle. Who are you tipping there, son? Yeah, look, I'm, t- I'm tipping United all day, mate. Uh, I'm going for a 2-0 there. 2-0. I'm also tipping United. I'm actually going to go 3 nil. Memphis to pay a goal. Juan right. Mata a goal. And Wayne Rooney to get off the mark get in there, for Curtis, me. Alright, next game. Crystal Palace versus Villa. Chris, who are you tipping there, mate? Um, I'm going to go with Palace just because uh, they're at home. And uh, like I said before, I don't, I don't think Villa have have many have much to offer at, at this stage of the season. And I like the look of Crystal Palace uh, with uh, Kabai. Sorry, mate. Did I get your prediction for the United? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. If you want to have a look here, I haven't, I haven't like cheated and looked at Curtis. I've gone with the same. I've gone three 0 to Manchester United. Yeah, I think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Sorry about that, but right, Edgar, I don't get Palace. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, I'm, I'm backing uh, Crystal Palace as well, man. Uh, Villa don't offer much going forward. They're looking different right now, and Palace look good, mate. Leicester versus Tottenham. Who are you going for, Edgar? I'm backing a draw here, mate. A draw. Chris, I'm gonna go with Spurs to get their first win of the season because uh, ooh, I think they're ooh. too good. Like they are, they are a half decent team to, um, to to not win out of their first three games. So no informed Leicester, no fairy tale continuing. No, I think that they're, they're bound to um, slow down sooner or later. I think Tottenham are a really good side. So. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm gonna go different from all you guys. I'm gonna back Leicester in continue. They're Claudi, uh, Claudio Ranieri range. Revolution, mate. Yeah, yeah, revolution. And I'm going to continue that. Leicester to win 2 0 for me. Norwich versus Stoke. Chris, who are you going for? Uh, Norwich. Norwich at home. This is going to be a draw for me personally. Yeah, Norwich to roll on, man, and get it going again. Sunderland versus Swansea. Let's make this quick. Let's all tick Swansea. Swansea. All day, mate. All day. All right. West Ham versus Bournemouth. Edgar. Yeah. Um, jumping on West Ham, mate. They've got to make up for that performance. So, um, West Ham. Yeah, West Ham for me, comfortably as well. I think Sako will have a good game as well. I'm tipping a draw because I think Bournemouth are a bit, were a little bit unlucky in both their games where they played well. And they might be able to pick up their first points against and maybe out of confident West Ham. Yes, okay. Uh, West Brom versus Chelsea. Chelsea is still looking for their first win of the season. Chris? Yeah, Chelsea should should get their first win of the season. They mm-hmm. seem to always batter West Brom. They seem yeah, to do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm back to the city. Um, Chelsea as well, mate. I'm yeah. actually going to go for a draw in this Ooh. game. I think it's going to continue. 
Uh, if you guys don't know Tony Pulis by now, his defenses. PFA, mate. Uh, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony Pulis, I reckon his boys are going to be up for it. He's, he's going to give the best team talk. And I'll tell you what, if you want to play Chelsea, now is the time yeah. if you want to beat him. So I think that West Brom can get a draw there. That's my prediction. Everton against. Manchester City, probably, uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be a tough game. That's going to be a very hard game. Who you going for, Edgar? Yeah, look, um, Everton have a pretty good record over uh, City, uh, so I'm backing a draw here, man. Yep. Uh, I think City are too good for them to lose, but um, yeah. I think Everton will hold them to a draw, mate. I'm going to have to disagree with you there. I think Manchester, Manchester City will continue their great uh, form. I know Everton were great away against Southampton, but they were also poor in their first game at home to Watford. I think they're going to continue their poor form, and I think uh, Manchester City will get the points. Chris? Well, you're going to hear a little bit a bit about this later on in the bold prediction for the week, but I'm going to just just go safe with my tipping and pick a draw yep. out of this game. Okay. Watford versus Southampton. Chris? Uh... I'll go, I'll go at Watford just for Edgar. <laughs> I'm tipping a draw here. Tipping a draw, mate. Tipping a draw. Probably now the biggest game of the week in Easy. the preview. Chris, your boys are up against Arsenal away at um, the Emirates. What do you think is going to happen there, mate? Arsenal will win this game. Oh. Arsenal will win this game, especially if Henderson doesn't play, because they will cut us to pieces in midfield. We st- we st- we fell apart after the first like 50, 50 minutes when he went off against Bournemouth. We fell apart. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think Arsenal is going to be too suave for Liverpool, man. Um, they're going to move that ball and they will win. You have heard it here first. <laughs> Don't care. Emre Chen is going to boss this game. <laughs> And he's going to boss Arsenal's midfield, and they're going to grab a draw. I think this, right. this game is going to be a draw between Arsenal and Liverpool. I've been saying it all season long. <laughs> Arsenal just seem to fly under the radar. They're massively overrated, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm thinking about this fixture last year. They did beat Liverpool, but Liverpool was so unlucky. Sterling had to score that goal. Or, sorry, yeah. uh, what's Markovic. his name? Markovic had to square that ball properly. 1-0, different game. And I think... Liverpool uh, can get some points here at this uh, game. But anyways, let's get to the bold prediction for the week where we predict something that will happen this week. Now, it's going to be something not out that outrageous, but it's going to be something that you're going to predict. Could be a player, could be uh, a player getting a red card, could be a goal, could be a manager getting sacked. It could be anything. Edgar, give me your bold prediction for the week. Well, yeah, um... I've caught a United 2 0 win and I'm getting on Rooney for a double. Silence the haters, mate, and get his season going. Rooney for the double, Absolutely. your ball prediction of the week. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. Chris, your ball prediction well, for the week. I've gone with Everton and Man City for a draw in my tipping, but my, my prediction, my bowl prediction for the week would be to go with Everton to actually get all three points in that game because I, I think it could, it, there is a slight possibility that that could happen. Yeah, that is, that is definitely a ball prediction there. My ball prediction for the week will be after next weekend, Tottenham Hotspurs will be in the relegation zone. Sorry, what was that? (laughs) (laughs) You heard it here. Tottenham in the relegation zone just because I think Leicester will continue their good form. And unfortunately, um, Tottenham only got uh, one point this season. So I think they will end up in the relegation zone. But lads, that's been the end of the seventh show for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you guys get your questions uh, in on Twitter and make sure you use the hashtag 7show. So until next time, lads, we will see you then. Anyways, I'm your boy, Curtis7. Take care and peace.